For this last video of the week, I want to take a look at one misconception question that deals with Bernoulli's law. Then I want to get back to the why do we care question of why is it that if we have our arm moved either too high or too low when we're having our blood pressure taken, that it can actually give a misleading result for your blood pressure. Before we talk about that though, can we go to the misconception question that says, how is the smoke drawn up a chimney affected when a wind is blowing outside? This is a perfect question to tackle when it's a nice crisp autumn day as it is outside. So imagine that on this crisp autumn day, you have a little fireplace, right? And there's a little fire going and there's a chimney, right? Up to the top right over here. And you know, here's your, here's your house. Um, and because it's a crisp day, there's like some wind blowing outside, right? There's wind blowing out here, okay? Now, what does Bernoulli's law have to say about the rate at which the smoke will rise through the chimney? All right, well, it's actually not that tough. We know that there's two positions here, position one and position two. And we know that according to Bernoulli's law, this expression, the pressure plus rho g y, the elevation, plus one half rho v squared must be constant. Okay, this is what Bernoulli's law says. Now, that means this expression must remain constant between here and here, all right? So what changes between here and here? Well, we know that elevation increases, so I'm gonna put an increasing elevation, right? But we also know that the velocity of the fluid up here is gonna be fairly high because wind is blowing rapidly above here, right? So we have an increased velocity for the fluid up above here, which means that if this thing is gonna remain constant, right, if, and these two terms are increasing, the pressure must radically decrease, all right? So what does that mean? It means that we have a lower pressure here than we do here, right? And we know that pressure equals force per area, which means there's gonna be a greater force pushing up than pushing down on that fluid, right? Which means that the smoke rising is going to be rising more rapidly. Kind of cool, right? This can be applied to any situation in which fluids move, and we can really glean a lot about what's happening in certain physical situations, including why it is that the smoke rises faster when there's a crisp wind blowing outside. Okay? All right, so let's go ahead and tackle that uh, why do we care question. So I'll go ahead and read it. It's no coincidence that you take your blood pressure such that the cuff is at the same exact height as your heart. You've probably gotten yelled at by your nurse, I certainly have, uh, for being out of position. Why is this? Use the hydrostatic pressure equation to determine what your blood pressure would be if you're holding your arm above your head. Okay, now here's the thing. If you're having your arm at your heart, your nice normal height, right, taking your blood pressure here, your average systolic pressure is going to be 120 millimeters of mercury. So your average systolic will be 120 millimeters of mercury. Now I did the conversion and this is actually 1.6 times 10 to the 4 pascals. Okay? All right. But if I am lifting or lowering my arm, that is going to change. And that's why you're gonna get a misleading answer. Why does it change? It changes because of this hydrostatic pressure equation. You guys remember this? Which basically says pressure is gonna increase from your original pressure, whatever it was, the deeper you get into some water right? Um, or the deeper you are submerged into some fluid. All right. So our original pressure, our normal pressure that we would have if it's totally aligned, right, would simply be 1.6 times 10 to the 4 pascals, right? Now, if we raise our arm, right, and we take our blood pressure with our arms raised, we're basically increasing our H to this distance, right? Um, roughly, I would say probably like a quarter of a meter, so 25 centimeters. Um, so 
the density of blood, that's the fluid we're dealing with here, is basically 1,000, right? Times 9.8 meters per second, that's gravity, times the height that you're raising it. However, remember, this H is expecting this to be an increase in depth, so going down, right? If you're moving up, it's the negative of that, so this is going to be a negative, I said about a quarter of a meter, so negative 0.25 meters. Remember, normally this equation is when you're submerging underwater, finding the pressure as you get deeper, but I'm not getting deeper, I'm actually moving above, so that's the opposite direction, I have to put a negative there to compensate for that. So this is going to give me a pressure of 1.6 times 10 to the 4 pascals minus, um, well, whatever the answer is to this, okay? And I get a value in my solutions of 1.35 times 10 to the 4 pascals, which is obviously less than this. And if I convert that to millimeters of mercury, which is what blood pressure is actually measured in, I get 101 millimeters of mercury. Okay? So the systolic, meaning the top number that you get when you're taking your blood pressure, it would decrease from 120 to 101, right? So your blood pressure would look dramatically lower if you're actually taking your blood pressure, you know, up here next to your face, okay? Why is that? Well, your heart has to work against gravity to get it up here, right? So the pressure is gonna have decreased by the time it gets to this point. Um, so next time your nurse yells at you for not having your arm in position, you know why. You can have a little bit more sympathy. And sympathy, empathy is always a good thing. All right, it's been a pleasure. I'll see you next week.